Ensure a healthy start to your new year with Momentum Health. Asthma is one of the most common lung illnesses in the world today. It affects 1 in 10 children, 10% 10 of kids globally, and 1 in 20 adults. When we breathe in, air passes through the voice box, down the windpipe, into the two main branches, or bronchi, which take air into our two lungs. These bronchi then divide further and further, becoming smaller and smaller as they take air deeper into the lungs to the point where oxygen passes into the bloodstream. Now, an asthma attack narrows or constricts those airways, and it's caused in three ways, either swelling of the lining, increased sticky secretions lying in the airways, and muscles going into spasm. So that's asthma. Now, we, we know, Shauna, that asthma is more common in boys. We know that it's more common in children with allergies or from allergic families, but we've seen a 20-fold increase in children who've come from rural areas to urban areas. Why is that? Well, the reason is not actually known, but there are factors that play a role, both genetic and environmental. But we can't pinpoint, pinpoint exactly why this is happening. So how do we diagnose asthma? Asthma is diagnosed by taking a history and through lung function tests and peak flows and trials of medication. Are there differences between a child's symptoms of asthma and an adult's? The symptoms are essentially the same. Um, there are symptoms that are related to having a narrowed airway. But it's an, important, uh, it's an important consideration that in children, a cough alone can be the only uh, symptom. And what kind of cough? I mean, it's an incessant, dry, kind of hacking yeah. cough. Uh... It's not a cough that's associated with a cold. It's a dry cough, and it typically happens sort of late in the afternoon when children are running around on the lawn mm -hmm. as the sun is going down. And you'll find one child just coughs for no particular reason. And in fact, it's very often asthma. So let's talk management of asthma. Asthma cannot be cured, but it can be managed very effectively. How do you go about doing that? Part of the management is education. Okay. If patients understand why they're taking the medication and what their condition is and how to treat it, they do much better. And the other aspect of it is medication itself. And medication is divided into two main groups, controllers and relievers. So the controller medication is medication that manages inflammation. And inflammation is really the main cause of the asthma symptoms. And unless the inflammation is controlled, patients will require their relievers all the time. The, re the relievers are the kind of med medication that work on the, um, the muscle. Yeah. There's, a, there's a very fine, smooth muscle that is found in the airways. Um, it's, it's, they line the airways all the way down the bronchi. And those, when you take reliever medication, those little muscles relax yeah. and allow air in. However, it's a short-term treatment. The main aspect of treatment is managing the inflammation so that those little muscles don't continually contract. And part of management of asthma is also avoiding triggers. Correct. Because if you can avoid that, you don't get the inflammation, you don't get the muscle spasm, you don't get the asthma. So what are some common triggers of asthma? You talked about running around in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, but let's get specific. Well, exercise is one of the triggers in some patients. It's very patient dependent. Um, some patients are very sensitive to cigarette smoke, for instance, or pollution. Um, other patients uh, have a sort of intrinsic form of asthma and it's difficult to see their triggers. And often a cold or the flu can trigger asthma too, Cod. It's one of the most common causes of an asthma exacerbation, especially in a child. And what about a, an acute asthma attack? Now, that, for those who've ever had an attack, it's the last thing you want. It's terrible, you feel like you just can't breathe. Yes. There are certain warning signs that can tell you I'm heading for an attack. Okay. What kind of warning signs do, do we need to look out for to prevent that happening or, or to you know, get us to reach for our relievers quickly so we don't get into the attack mode? Well, patients who are having more symptoms than they usually have, okay. particularly symptoms at night that wake them, uh, those are little warning signs that something might be beginning. Okay. Um, the need for reliever medication more often than usual is a very important warning sign. And a lot of patients actually have peak flow meters at home, and they know what their peak flow should be. And when they start to see these warning signs, they test their peak flow, and they're able to see that wow. they're running into a little bit of trouble. Which plays right back into your earlier statement about educate yourself around asthma and the disease, and you'll be able to control it. Absolutely. The aim in asthma medication, uh, in asthma treatment, would be to try and educate patients yeah. uh, to manage themselves to to reach a point where they're so well controlled through self-management that they lead completely normal lives. Yeah. 
which you can do, which is great. Which you can do. Exercise-induced asthma, very briefly, how would you manage that? Because a lot of people don't have asthma, yes. but they do get an exercise-induced form of asthma. Yes. The main treatment for that would be to use a bronchodilator before exercising. 50% of childhood asthma cases go into remission. Yes. And a lot of people feel that you can outgrow asthma in your teenage years, but don't be fooled, that's not altogether true, because almost 30% of those almost uh, reactivate. What, what happens is that the asthma symptoms sort of settle for periods of patients' lives, um, sometimes in puberty, sometimes later on in life, um, and then the symptoms are triggered again by an event at some point, very often a bronchitis, um, and then those symptoms uh, become part of a person's life again, and then they may again settle down. So it's something that sort of waxes and wanes over a lifetime, but it's never cured completely. <laughs> Shauna, thank you so much. So here's our three-point plan to managing your asthma effectively. And remember, asthma can't be cured, but it can be managed perfectly. Here's the first point. Take your medication as prescribed. It's very important to take your controller daily as prescribed, even if you feel better and have no asthma symptoms. And use your reliever inhaler if and when needed. Rather use it too soon and more, of, more often than too late or not at all. And in fact, if you experience any changes in your symptoms, as Shauna mentioned, contact your doctor. Secondly, avoid getting sick. Do what you can to stay well. Get a flu shot every year to protect against the flu virus, which almost always makes asthma much worse for days and weeks on end. And then finally, identify your asthma triggers and try to avoid them. Figure out what takes your breath away, literally, and don't go there, especially cigarette smoke. Not only will it worsen your asthma, but it causes more than 600,000 deaths each year, it can cause low birth weight in newborn babies, and can lead to heart disease. And that's just for smokers. For non-smokers, secondhand smoke is even more harmful. So avoid it like the plague. Being active has never been more rewarding. I want to live the best life.